Wow. Thank you again. I'm getting used to having music at conferences. Yeah, it, it should be a standard. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, uh, one little thing we have to mention here is you all have the app on your device, hopefully, and keep on rating the talks. And this app uh, was being programmed by two students at Sunstorm. Yes, Johanna and Hanno. Hanno. So, so please, give it up yeah. for both of them. So the next one on stage, I think, uh, is pretty well known. Um, here, a former colleague of mine, and uh, we have worked together, we have partied together, and um, he will tell us something about updating NEOS. Why, when, and how, so please, Welcome, Carsten Dammekalz. Ah, yeah, now I remember, and everyone has been saying the same, but yeah, if I do this, I can actually see you. Um, awesome to be here again after this two year of not having a real conference. Um, welcome. It's, it's exciting again, it's like, like, I don't know, 10 years ago when I go, oh yeah, I gotta be on stage now. And so it's, it's, it's bringing back memories. So um, yeah, um, I'm Carsten, I've been, uh, well, I, I will tell you how to update NEOS and why you should do it and when you should be doing it. And um, how am I, or who am I to, to, uh, to tell you what you should be doing? Um, I've been, I work at Flow Native, as you, it's easy to see. Um, and um, I've been around this project from, or at a time when we didn't even have that name. We didn't even know that we actually wanted to create a completely new system. Um, Robert uh, showed you this refactoring session uh, photo from 2005. So it's been a while, it's been 17 years. Uh, actually, it's more than a third of my life that I spend on this project and with this project. So um, that's, that's why I, I dare to say that I have seen a lot of updates uh, that went well and some that didn't, and so I will be uh, hopefully able to tell you a bit about that. So why, when, and how should you be updating? Um, Basically, I mean, I know what I'm talking about, so let's do this the, the easy way. Um, why? Because you get features and you get bug fixes, obviously, so, and that's something that you all want to have. You want to be your project uh, to be successful and you know, to keep running, so you get all the bug fixes in and your, your editors and your clients are happy again. Um, and when should you be doing it? Well, obviously, as soon as you can. Whenever there's a new version, you just do whatever you need to do, and then you update your project, and then you are happy. Um, and, uh, and, and, and how do you do that? I mean, you have, who, who has not updated one of their newest projects ever? <laughs> so, OK, OK, one. So everyone else knows it. Why are you here? <laughs> that would be an interesting question. Um, so basically, what you do is you read the instructions, um, you do what they say, and then you have updated your near side, and then it's, it's done, right? So, um, so that's, yeah, I mean. Uh, actually, I, I, I handed this in as a lightning talk, but somehow there was a mix-up, so I guess we just, yeah, let's, let's, let's try again, okay. Let's, let's go back to the first question again. So why should you update? Um, the, 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 the benefit is just everything that I mentioned already. You get your bug fixes, you get your new features, um, performance gains, it's also a feature. Um, your outdated versions eventually will no longer be supported, so you, you run the risk of getting not even security fixes after a while. Um, so that is 
all a, a that, that in, in combination should be a really good reason to update. So features, um, there have been a few features. I mean, Robert mentioned some of those uh, in his keynote, um, like uh, speedier move operations, faster publishing. Um, we have this new fusion parser, not exactly faster, not slower, but not faster also, but a real pleasure for, for, for integrators, for developers, because it gives you a lot better um, error messages, for example. It's more strict in parsing, but if it throws your fusion back at you, you at least understand what's wrong with it, which could be hard to find out in the past. Um, support for newer PHP features and versions, which is good. Um, then uh, also new features in Fusion, not only on the PHP side of the end, but also in, in Fusion new features. Uh, support for new PSR projects uh, or uh, standards. And, and Atomic Fusion has been kind of an add-on, and then it really gained traction in the community, so now it is a core feature. Um, and node presets and more things, right? So features. Features are good. Uh, bugs are not good, so you can use an update to get rid of bugs. Um, with bugs, it's similar. Well, everyone likes a new feature, but if you have a bug being fixed that you did never experience, you may think, well, yeah, whatever. I mean, I don't know, editor UI fixes. That's nice. I never tried to drag and drop um, things in the node tree anyway, so I didn't even realize it wasn't working. Could happen. Um, but on the other hand, if you, have your, if you have your bugs fixed before an editor realized they were there, um, no one will come to you and complain about a bug, right? So fixing a bug before someone sees it is even better than fixing it after someone has seen it. So uh, we had lots of bug fixes. Um, make sure to, to read the, the release notes um, to see if maybe something that you didn't even realize was a bug, but simply thought to be, that's a weird behavior of Nears, but well, yeah, this has always been like that. Um, it could just have been a bug that you didn't put in the right category, and now it's fixed, so that's, that's nice. And of course, security. You know, security is important because uh, hackers, like, oh, style sheet hackers. Wow. It's so hard to find a stock photo of a hacker, right? <laughs> it's next to impossible. Um, no, for real, um, security is not that bad with Nears. Um, this is like, I don't know, five, six, uh, nine, ten, ten security issues that we uh, had a security announcement for since the very beginning of the project. So that's, I, I dare say, really an excellent track record um, of creating secure software in the first place, um, and then also fixing the few things that, that slipped through. Uh, in fact, one of those is more or less an advisory saying, yeah, we allow you to install a version that has an issue, so please update. So it's actually nine issues that Neos itself had. But still, even your dependencies or the dependencies of Neos can have security issues. So you want those to be fixed and in a timely manner. So um, updating to keep your system secure is good. Um, and not only Neos can be updated or should be updated. Um, also, uh, think about the other tools in your stack, right? So what's the first thing that comes to mind probably to a Neos um, systems administrator or developer? Of course, the PHP version. And as you can see, Robert asked who is already on PHP 8 this morning, and then he hesitated a second and said, can I, say, can I say already? No, you cannot say already, because if you check that, that's, it's today is not the 25th any longer, but it was, uh, I didn't want to update that graphic. Um, but what you can actually see is that even PHP 8.0 is, I don't know, in, in, the, in the prime time of its life cycle right now, okay? So um, 
uh, before this year is over, it will be in security fix only mode. So if you are still on PHP 7, you are actually already in this kind of retirement phase of PHP. So um, also keep that in mind to update. Um, and the same is true for example, Elasticsearch. Um, I was actually amazed at this, that they hide this um, end of life, uh, I don't know, they call it end of life uh, version list or whatever. It's relatively well hidden on their website. Um, but they also list this, and, and if you are you still using any uh, Elasticsearch 6. something, you are already after the end of life for that. So um, update that. And then, of course, yeah, well, databases. Databases age very well. Um, I mean, there's uh, Postgres and MySQL both have pretty long release cycles. Um, and then there are other things like, uh, I don't know, Redis or whatever that you don't maybe don't even notice that they are being updated because that's just something that you install with your operating system or that your hosting provider has. And it's, not, it's usually not a hassle to update that. Um, but even that should be uh, kept in mind. So um, why should you update fewer bugs, new features, better performance, um, improved security most of the time, um, and continued support for the things that you are using? So when should you be doing this? Um, I already said that in, in connection to security, I said update in a timely manner, so do it sooner rather than later. Um, and um, I, I would say that there's no reason not to update unless, and that's the one exception, that you already happen to know that the new version has some kind of bug that affects you in your project. Then you should probably hold back and at least not update your production system if you were the one to find the, the bug in, in, during an update. Um, then wait for the fix before you roll out to production. Um, but other than that, I would say always try to update. Um, and um, I already said the same thing, more or less, in uh, the last time we were here, in 2019. I had this uh, project, Neos project setup talk, and I said that an updated day keeps the downtime away. Um, so uh, yeah, do it, do it as soon as you can. If there is a new release, I mean, if it's, if it's, we try to avoid that, but if there was a release on Friday night, of course you don't have to come into the office, whatever you do nowadays, um, and do it on a Saturday. You, it can wait a few days, but do it. Don't push it for too long. Now, why don't people do that regularly? Yeah, well, usually you get arguments along the lines of, yeah, yeah, we tried that once, and it, it broke our site. So, yeah, of course an update can break things, um, and it depends on the version steps you take and so on, but usually um, if that comes as a surprise, then, then um, well, of course you test that first, and of course you do a backup, right? I mean, before you deploy a new updated version, um, then, then you do a backup first. So you can roll back, have some strategy for for undoing whatever you are doing uh, in case there is really um, a problem as soon as you actually deploy to production. And I have seen cases where during production deployment, things started to go wrong. But in, in very, very, very rare cases, the update was the issue. In, in most of the cases, it's really uh, someone forgot to update that setting also in the uh, configuration of the production system. You know, these kinds of errors, not something that is inherently wrong with the update. Because if it runs in staging and it doesn't run in production, it cannot be the co the cause cannot be the code that you deploy because it runs here, it doesn't run there. There must be a difference between those systems. Another argument is like, yeah, we don't need new stuff. You know, features, oh, like features, well, we don't need that. 
We just keep it running. It works. That's fine um, until, I don't know, your hosting provider emails you saying, oh, by the way, starting April, there won't be any more PHP 5.6. We are just, you know, it's dead in the water. We just don't have that on our service anymore starting in April. And then you call the guy that created your website seven years ago, and he says, yeah, well, I don't do Neos anymore, or, well, I don't do such small projects anymore, or, you know what, I became rich, I retired. And then you're like, okay, so what do we do now? And then you ask someone else, and then eventually someone writes me an email and says, yeah, you know, can you update that site? Um, so uh, I did that. In, uh, I, I, I actually had to update a NEOS 1.0 site for that precise reason. Um, and that wasn't five years ago. That was November 2020. Uh, it was seven years after the version that they were using was released. And it was still, the site was still running, unchanged. And the site is still running, except now it's on Neo 7. So that was seven years later, Neo 7. Maybe that wasn't a coincidence at all. Um, so what, what other reasons could pressure you to update, even though you don't need any of these fancy new features? Well, security issues. If there is actually a security issue uh, that can be exploited, and it is known, and you can't update because you haven't done it for so long, it would be such a big step, um, then, well, then you have a problem. Because then you actually need to rush it, which, of course, makes it more risky. Um, well, re related technology. It's not always PHP. It could also be that, I don't know, <laughs> Elasticsearch is no longer supported in version 2.4. And then you need to update your Elasticsearch adapter to, oh, that doesn't work with my Neos 3.3 anymore. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a chain. It's an ecosystem. You have dependencies to other tools. Um, or maybe, I don't know, who had to adjust a site when GDPR regulations came into effect. Okay, one, two, oh, that's, oh, well, that's a lot of people. See, so, and then you suddenly need this cookie banner, and then you, ah, how do I roll my own? Oh, no, let's take this cookie package by, I don't know, Kaufmann Digital, or, you know, you, you look for it, and then, then, and then you're like, oh, this doesn't work with my old Neos. Same situation, you should be updating before you need to so you're not pressurized or doing it in a rush. Um, OK. And then, yeah, <laughs> see? 101 was the version that I had to update. December 13. It was actually the second version. Um, it was a day after 100. So, see? They, they did their first up. No, well, probably they didn't update. They just started a day late. And then before April. 2014, because they would have used this then. So we can exactly tell in what range this site was started. Um, OK, next argument against updating. We run a mission-critical site. It's a bit like the very first one. We tried once and failed, um, because if you, if you think your site is mission-critical and you cannot afford any mistake introduced by updating, it's basically the same. Uh, you are afraid of breaking. I, I know, I understand that there are situations where you cannot have a downtime um, if in any way avoidable. But if you are in that situation, if, you're, if your project is that critical, you're probably running in some sort of clustered environment and could do a rolling update. Um, and of course, if, if, if your project is mission critical, you test your updates, right? And you have a rollback strategy and, and everything in place. So um, that's not really an argument. You should be even better prepared and able to do such updates uh, than if you were not running a mission-critical site. And if you don't have that tool chain in place and that knowledge, then it can't be that mission-critical, because, or at least your priorities are wrong. So um, even then, do updates, because it's less risk. And then that's my favorite. It, it really bugs me. No, we don't use any intermediate versions. We don't. We only use LTS versions. Okay, maybe it's our fault because we actually put that label on on our releases. Um, 
And back then, it felt like the right thing to do. Uh, and and the, the, the feeling that this induces in people, obviously, is that you know, these are more reliable because they are, you know, a bit like a dry-aged steak. You know, they have been around for three miners, and so, you know, all the little gritty bugs are ironed out. Um, and they have a longer support lifetime because, you know, it's a long-term support release. But that's not true. So, um, if, you, if you look at this, then, then the releases um, since 4.3, you know, that is, that is, as of today, 8.0 is the current branch that we have. Um, and you can see that, that, uh, that, that line here, that's like roughly today. <laughs> um, and you see it, it, it just, you know, after, after 4.3, okay, these are dead. You know, no security fixes anymore. But for anything, Starting with 5.3, we are well in the life cycle, you know? So any of these. So, okay, the 5.3 LTS is still alive. So it's true, these releases live long. But they don't live longer. I mean, absolutely speaking, they live longer. This is the longest bar uh, in, in, up to this point, right? 7, 7.1, 7, 7.2, 7, they are shorter. But they are still supported in the same way. And that's simply, um, uh, and, and, and it goes even further, because if you, if you look at from now, so the, the, the most recent LTS, 7.3, will be supported until, I don't know, what is that? 2025 or end of 2024. So, so there is an overlap from 7.3 to even the beginning of 9.3. And if you use any version in between, in this yellow rectangle here, if you now start a project and you say, well, no, we can't use 8.0, or if you start a project somewhere in July and you say, no, we can't use 8.1, we must use the, the LTS, the 7.3, then you are really missing out on things. And there's no reason to do so, because these will live as long as the most recent LTS. So keep that in mind, not, not using or only using an LTS version doesn't bring you a real benefit. It's just a labeling decision gone wrong, basically. Okay. Th this would be where I would say any questions, so just write them in the app. So we do that later on. So now, how should you update? That's all fine. Okay, I, I get it. I should be updating regularly, and it's yeah, probably he's right about the reasons, and and there isn't really there isn't really an excuse. So how should you be doing this? The, the general recipe is actually just what I said earlier: read the instructions. So read the release notes, um, then adjust your composer JSON to allow the new version if that is needed. So if you're doing a major upgrade, you need to relax your constraints. Um, then do a dry run of Compose Update. As we've learned today, it's uh, actually feasible to do that a few times in a row after updating anything in your manifest. You don't have to wait for two minutes, just for 15 seconds, maybe. Um, do a dry run, check the results. Is the, ex the, the set of packages that would be updated and installed, is that matching your expectation? Or will it, along with uh, NEOS 9, pull in flow one, two for some weird reason of dependency, interdependencies. Is that a thing? I don't know. Um, then actually do the Composer update, commit the changed manifest so that you can actually also reproduce it. Um, then run the core migrations that we have to adjust at least some of the things that need to be adjusted. Um, run the database migrations, check the results of, of these steps. Um, and then test again, test, test yet again, um, adjust as needed, deploy to staging or testing. Uh, if you don't have one running all the time, just you know, fire up a new virtual machine, a server, a cluster, whatever you need. Um, deploy to there, test again, test again, 
uh, have your client test it, and then deploy to production. That's basically it. So obviously, how to do that depends a bit on, on what kind of update are you doing. Um, so just a quick uh, walkthrough. We have three types of releases uh, in the semantic versioning world, as you probably know. Um, patch level releases, these are the easiest. They must, by definition, not be breaking. And um, I'd say, I don't know, 98% of the time, they are not breaking. Um, sometimes, you know. Whatever, we are all humans. We do make we, we do make mistakes. Um, so uh, they only contain bug fixes. And updating to a new patch level release should really be a composer update. Okay, everything's fine. Deploy. That should be it. So that's for me at least. In, in except in in complex projects like an hour of work maybe you know. 15 minutes, you know, OK, f uh, commit the changed block file and then deploy, and then test it a bit, and then have the customer test it, and then they give the green light, and then can, it's, it's done. It can be merged into main and then deploy it or whatever. Um, minor releases, you know, when the second digit of the version number changes, um, they bring new features. That can, of course, mean there are new bugs, but most of the time, those bugs are in the new features. So it does not break anything that has been working already. Um, still, that's more work, because you probably will make use or want to make use of the new features. Um, that might mean you know, I need to adjust the thing, a few things here and there, configure something new, I don't know, install uh, a new tool on your server or whatever. Depends on the feature, obviously. Um, so might need a database migration. So, I don't know, you might want to do an extra backup before, but still, these are usually rather risk or low risk, not risk free, but low risk uh, updates. And then major releases. Yeah, well, major releases, that's the, you know, that's where the work is. It's not where the risk is, but it's where the work is. But also, the reward can be, can be greater than with the other release types um, because you, you you know, all the breaking stuff, and you know that, oh, yeah, th this, this NIRS now has 52,000 lines less of code. That's good. It, your server is lighter, and then it, it starts to float eventually. Um, no, don't believe me. Um, but this will need even more adjustments. Um, it, it might contain breaking changes that you need to be doing manually. Um, it needs, of all the types of releases needs the most testing, obviously. Um, but even a major release can be comparatively easy. Let's say it like that. So um, approaching an update, there's sometimes this question, so, so how, how do I, do I need to do, you know, from 2.3x to to, uh, oh, let's start with a more recent version. Uh, I have 7.0 now. Do I need to go to 7.1 and then to 7.2 and then to 7.3 and then to 8.0? Or can I just do all in one go? Yes, you can, all in one, you can do that in one go. I mean, obviously, read all the release notes of the range you cover. Um, but you don't need to be doing these incrementally. You can just, you know, change your dependencies and go right away to version 8, and then run the migrations, core migrations, database migrations, uh, and adjust your code. You don't need to do that step by step. Um, sometimes you end up with a non-installable set of packages. You need to find out what, which of my dependencies do I need to update to a new major version eventually. Um, maybe I have had my dependencies too strict. Um, out of experience, I can tell you that going directly to the, your target version works, except if you're coming from NEOS 1 something. <laughs> you absolutely have to go to 2.0 first. That needs PHP 5.6. It, it was interesting to you know, get that up and running, um, because there are migrations that actually need the state of the database at that point, and then do something. And then from there, you can move on. So that's an exception. But I hope there are no, not too many NEOs pre-2 projects in the wild anymore. Um, OK, 
sometimes you need to not only allow a new newest version, but you also need to update more of your dependencies. Um, um, like if you go to, to uh, Neos version 8, you might need, I don't know, a new version of the Flow Native Google Cloud Storage package. Um, and if you happen to only allow 5.2 and not 5.3, then this will not be installable. Or like, I don't know, it's, it's a very, it's, it's a, a random example more or less, but PSMB split add makes a tiny, tiny uh, button in the back end. Um, Let's, let's, let's take that as an example, how to find out if you need that. So usually your constraints allow updates. So if you use caret uh, 5.2, then everything up to not 6 already is allowed. So usually you don't have that problem. Um, and uh, it's different for 0.x versions. Composer behaves differently. Um, and let's see, uh, because sometimes people find it hard to interpret the, the, the output of Composer. So this is like, I don't know, I tried to update here, and Composer just goes like, oh, yeah, no, pff, I don't know, something's wrong here. And I look at this screen and say, oh, well, well that looks complex. It's a lot of problems. So let's look at it. Um, first of all, yeah, your requirements cannot be installed um, or resolved to an installable set of packages. Uh, OK. Great. Those that heard the uh, talk about composer dependency analysis know that this conclusion was hard work already, so admire it a bit. And then be happy uh, about the fact that it's only one problem it found. Um, it, I have seen composer update tries where it spit out like seven sets of problems, and each was like a screen full of error messages. So we only have one problem. What is the problem? OK, so um, those lines about, yeah, Neos, Flow, 4.3, that requires PHP 7, but your version is 8 something, uh, does not satisfy the requirement. These lines, of Neos, Flow, Neos, uh, Neos, Neos, uh, they, don't, they are of, of no interest to me. That's not a problem, because these are versions that I don't want to have anyway. I want to have a new version. OK, so we can ignore those. Um, and, uh, and then it says, yeah, OK, um, down here, yeah, only one of these can be installed. It's basically telling me what it could be doing. But again, these are not the versions I'm interested in anyway. So what is the problem? In, not in the first line, obviously, <laughs> for reasons, I don't know. Um, we see that actually our root manifest, so the composer JSON of the project, requires our site package. Yeah, I know. That's, that's, I put it there. Um, and our site package now wants to have Neos 8. OK. Um, but it says it cannot install that. So I'm like, why can it not be installed? So um, it's somewhere, so I look further at those uh, errors, and it says, yeah, PSMB split at 0.3 requires 7 or 5 or 4 or 3.3 three of Neos. It, I, it could be satisfied by installing a range of versions, but that's not the version you want. So sorry, I cannot do that. So um, the next question would be, if you don't know, why is this package PSMB split ad needed? Um, you could. Just look at your composer JSON files or your manifests, or you could use composer Y, PSMB split add on the console. Um, but actually, we, we see it here. OK, our site package requires it. And it requires it as caret 0.3. So shouldn't that be allowing everything until 1.0? No, because for 0.0 versions, it is anticipated that even a minor change or a minor release has breaking changes because zero something is in active development. It hasn't been stable, really. So that's why Composer behaves differently here. So we need to update um, manually and allow 0.4. If you ever want to know um, what, what versions of a package would be installed following your constraint, there's a nice website, um, Sember Checker, um, that you can use to, to find out. So in this case, it's clear. And there's also uh, Composer outdated as a command. 
It gives you a long list of things that you could update. Um, unfortunately, it often lists things that you cannot really influence because it may tell you, oh, well, yeah, you could be using, I don't know, Doctrine ORM version 2058 by now. Yeah, but, well, Flow doesn't allow it. That's nothing you can change. So this list will probably never be empty. There will always be things that you could update to, in theory, but cannot practically do it. Um, because, you know, transitive dependencies are not something that you can always influence easily. Still, it's helpful. Um, and then I mentioned Composer Y. It's way easier to understand uh, if you just want to know why an exact package is required. Doing the update. Now, doing the update actually means um, if you do the dry run and the results turn out to be installable and it looks fine, you just do it. Um, then you update without the dry run flag, you commit the results, and then you run the core migrations. Um, so flow core, flow, core migrate, and then one package after the other. For which packages do you do that? For your own packages. Um, hopefully, the dependencies you have, and that's one caveat with uh, updating early on. If there's a new version that has just been released and it's not a bug fix release, you might have the problem that your dependencies are not yet ready for that. You can then, of course, fork them, check if they work with the new major version of NIAS, uh, and open a pull request if that works. That would be awesome. Um, or you can just wait a bit. Like um, when, when 8.0 was released, I went on vacation for a week. And uh, in that one project that I had to update, all the dependencies were done by then. So that was nice. Um, so just waiting a bit can be helpful. Um, so on your own packages, run the core migrations, check the results. I usually clean up after a core migrate. Um, so what it does, it, it creates a commit for each migration. Um, so you can easily inspect what it has been doing. And what I do usually is I, I look at those commits and then I soft reset to the commit before, and I just you know, make one commit out of these per my package that I want to update. Um, because that gives you, uh, this is like uh, three migrations have been applied. None of them actually did a change. But so it just changed the composer JSON to mark them as migrated. So what I do is I, I git rebase. Um, and then instead of three commits, I just have one. I rephrase it a bit. And so it, it keeps my, uh, my git history a bit cleaner. And um, now, not all changes that you need to be doing are done automatically by the core migrations. Um, there is things that cannot be really automated um, that where you must actually really understand the code at hand to judge if that needs to be renamed or if that needs to be fixed or how it needs to be rewritten to be, to be still usable. Um, so uh, some examples are the removal of the Fusion prototype generator. Um, if you need to adjust to that, that's manual work. Um, logging changes, there were like, there was some migration support for that, but not for everything, so that needed still manual work, um, which would at least make your code cleaner. Um, fluid view helpers, the render arguments were dropped. If you had lots of view helpers, that meant manual work, not something that you can easily automate because it's not only about the arguments being moved elsewhere, it's about how to access them and use them. Um, and HTTP components, for example, were deprecated and then dropped. Now it's middlewares, standards, compliant, all fine, but still you need to rewrite them. So uh, there will be... Um, a list of links and resources for you to look at. So don't worry if you're missing some detail here. I'm just showing you um, an example of the, of the fluid change that needed to be done, uh, fluid, fusion change uh, that needed to be done um, when, you, when the prototype generator was dropped. That was tedious because you needed to assign uh, a template and you needed to assign all the properties. The prototype generator would do that for you. All the properties of your node would be assigned to the template. 
that was convenient, but it was neither very transparent nor very performant. So now you need to do it by hand, which means a lot of work. Um, but it's also a good opportunity to clean up your templates. Are all those properties even used? Um, or can I maybe just switch to AFX while I'm at it anyway? Um, and, and if you absolutely need to bail out on this one, well, just pull the prototype generator from the source. It's, I mean, you can just put it in your own package and reactivate it. In this case, it's at least a workaround. Um, OK, yeah. The logging changes. Well, yeah, tedious. You need to adjust the injection. It's not the system logger interface anymore. It's just the PSR logger interface. And then the log calls are different now, but they have more meaning now. They have semantics, actually. You just say, OK, this logger warning, and not, you know, oh, was it the first or the last argument for the log level? I mean, I, I got that wrong in a few cases where I just put the log level first because I copied code from somewhere and syslog has the level first and then the message and we had it the other way around. So um, rather easy but tedious, but you need to do it manually. Um, and sometimes the logging calls are wrong and you never notice because you never run into that exception. So sometimes you're lucky. Um, the render arguments thing for view helpers, that was something. In, 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 I had one particular project that I needed to update where I really spent, I don't know, hours that I split over multiple days because after 15 view helpers, you're like, ah, give me a break already. And then you say, OK, I can do the other folder with view helpers. I can do that tomorrow. Um, but again, a great opportunity to also clean up, um, maybe make those view helpers, uh, I don't know, compile static aware or whatever. So if, if you are at code, just do the refactoring along the way, you know, clean up. Um, so, so see this as an opportunity. And then this, this whole thing, components to middlewares, that seems complex because it involves multiple places where you need to adjust. Um, but it's not too bad, so you need to adjust the settings. Um, in this case, we had some, some component that uh, was a, uh, well, a, a component that wasn't a component. Well, that doesn't make sense. Um, now it's a middleware. The settings are actually no longer in, uh, in the place they used to be. They are elsewhere, and they are injected via objects, YAML, and whatever. So this is rather easy, and it's, it's even cleaning things up a bit. Um, Obviously, you need to rename and move the class. It's not a component anymore. It's a, it's a middleware now, and it implements a different interface, and it has a different um, way of handling its task. It's not, no longer handle component context, but it's a process function. But um, the business logic inside can probably be kept as is. So it's more or less you know, renovating the facade. And if you ever get stuck, you obviously have options. Um, if you have an issue, search for it. We have, I don't know, Discuss and Slack and, and well, you, know, you can just Google it or DuckDuckGo it or, I don't know, whatever your favorite search engine is. There's probably someone else that also had this issue, so ask for help um, in the community uh, or ask your agency. I mean, if you're, if you're an in-house team in some company and have someone else that, you know, does the really heavy lifting for you, try to ask them. And if all else fails, well, you can ask me. Um, that's OK. Um, I, do that for, I do that for money. Uh, so yeah, and then if you're done with that, then test and deploy. I mean, obviously, you had this running on your development machine, and you tested it. Um, and if you want to know more about testing, Christopher Lubeck will talk about end-to-end -end testing for near sites tomorrow, f theoretically, 2 p.m. on this stage. Maybe later, we'll see. Um, so maybe that helps you. And if you still run into an issue after your update, right, I mean, ideally, you found that on your local machine and then on the staging instance. But if it happens, then either you made a mistake so double check what you did, what is wrong, what's the difference between production and staging if it ran on staging. Um, if, it, if you don't even get it to run on your local machine, read the release notes again, look at the change logs, maybe you missed something. Or 
you found a bug. Maybe something is broken now. Um, then, of course, you know, raise an issue uh, with the NEOS GitHub issue tracker and you know, make us fix it. That's absolutely an option. So, why, when, and how should you be updating? Obviously, you know, features, bug fixes, security. Don't let the circumstances rush you into an update. Be proactive. Do it while you can do it in a relaxed way. Um, that's way better than having to do it now, right? Um, and, then, and then how? Well, yeah, <laughs> read the instructions. Um, and uh, I, will, I, will, uh, I will, you know, help you with that. I, I, put this, I put more reading material on. So that's it. Um, that would be my, my conclusion. And uh, questions probably. I don't know. Someone will probably read questions to me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Th thanks for listening already. Um, there's this fancy QR code which leads you to a blog post. And if, if uh, the time-based publishing of NEOS works, this blog post is live by now. Um, if not, I will fix it afterwards. Uh, and it'll, it'll have the slides and it'll have more links to documentation and code examples and you know, pull requests that did fancy updates to the public NEOS sites and so on. Thank you, Carsten. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> Very good. Uh, actually, the both of us just uh, recently had a larger update that took longer than expected and should have been done much earlier. <laughs> true, yeah, true. <laughs> Some, well, sometimes it is just complex and big, and I know that, and it can really be frustrating. And we did, um, <laughs> it's, it's actually linked the, the, the update to the NEOS IO site itself. It's a great example of things that stretch way longer than you expect them to, um, because more or less this one component of ours was, you know, very reluctant <laughs> to be updated. <laughs> Let's put it like that, so. But we do have some questions from the audience okay. yes. that we will ask you. And uh, keeping with older versions, we have a question, would you update really old NEOS versions like 3.3 or even older today? Have you any limits on the, on the age of the project to save your mental health? Well, this, this one, one zero project that I updated, um, I mean, okay, I admit it was small. Probably if it was a, would have been a large project with that early version, I would have been involved with it, to be honest, um, because at that time, it was really no, only a few people that would have dared to use NEOS for, for larger projects. But um, um, taken into account that it was rather small, um, it was still, except from this step, in, in, in between that I needed to abs absolutely needed to do 2.0 in between, which I realized only, you know, afterwards, and then I had to go back and then do it again. Um, aside from that, it was, well, not bad for my mental health. It was actually, <laughs> if, it was pretty interesting to, you know, look at this old stuff, and, and it was surprisingly smooth uh, to update that even what though it wasn't old. So, and, and I mean, in the end, it boils down to do I update or do I go from scratch again? Mm -hmm. Because if you want to stay with NEOS and you want to keep your site, um, maybe you would be doing a redesign anyway. So, you know, the graphics designers are already uh, coming up with a new uh, layout for your site and, you know, all the texts will be rewritten anyway. Then you could, of course, start from scratch. But if you want to update, I think, there's, you know, always a way to do that. Okay, and then we have quite a few questions with the same topic. So I'll pick one. Is there something like Neos Rector to automate breaking code changes, which is able to do more complex changes than the core migrations? <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have that. <laughs> Actually, when... Uh, when we had the first you know, set of breaking changes coming up ever, we wanted to 
make it easier for people to upgrade. So we came up with this core migrations um, tool set that we have. It is rather limited because it basically doesn't understand your code. You can say, you know, do a search and replace either straight away or based on regex um, on certain types of files. Um, so it's text-based. Um, we have things in place that are more targeted, like you know, fixing YAML settings somewhere. But something like Rector is definitely a topic that we want to look at. There are people experimenting with it um, in the NEOS community um, currently to you know, ease the upgrade to you know, state-of-the-art PHP 8.1 everything fancy code. But um, given that you can write your own transformations for Rector, um, it would definitely be something that I would like to see, but I just didn't get around to implementing it, really, um, for, I don't know, probably some kind of reason. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it would be great to have that. Um, it's definitely something that we would not reject, and it's, it's been worked on in some way. So, but if, if I don't know who asked that, if you're here or if you're couple, there, or, you know, <laughs> just join forces. I mean, if there are a couple of people, we could probably, you know, come up with some, some rough first draft of how it could work and then integrate it. So that would be awesome. Yeah. And maybe they just grab you outside. Yeah. And, uh, you can grab me that. anywhere you like. <laughs> <laughs> if, I don't know who remembers that one anyway. <laughs> no, perfect. I think we... Uh, um, Still a bit late, but we don't Sorry. rush. No, that's not a problem. <laughs> we don't want to rush through everything. We want to allow questions. We want to allow your socializing and your breaks. So um, we give it another 10 minutes, uh, and we like that shouldn't be much of a problem in the evening. We just have partying and dinner together. Um, so if you're still a bit hungry, maybe there's a little bit to get outside still. Uh, Is there need. some cake? Left? Could be. Some cake. Some cake. Some cake, perhaps. And there's always the candy bar. Pro probably like <laughs> 10 pieces of cake left, so <laughs> go. <laughs> no, but, um, everyone very relaxed. Carsten, thank you so thank much you. for your talk. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. And you still get a present. <laughs> I unboxed it for you already. The box ah. is over there. I just wanted to show this nice bottle with a tote on there. Ooh. I'm not sure if it's an ingredient or not, but I can find out. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll try. Maybe, yeah. I, maybe it tastes like toad. <laughs> Do I know how toad tastes? You'll find out. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, thanks again. Thank you so much, and some more music, and we we'll see you again in 10 minutes.